turn real quick tonight to Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. Give you a second to, to find it. Let's have some good Bible study tonight. Let's make sure we, we get something out of this. Let's didact this word in a way tonight that, that we can grab it and hold on to it and put it in our spiritual box. Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. If you have it, say amen. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. Who go back. So somebody like that. I'm, I'm gonna read it again. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. Yeah, set him free, didn't he? And he said before all the people, this is Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. In the same way I will break the yoke off of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went on his way. Uh, after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Why the word of the Lord didn't go to Hananiah? The word of the Lord, Rebecca, went straight to who? Jeremiah. Go and tell who? Hananiah that this is what the Lord said. Wait a minute. Didn't Hananiah just tell the people what's going to take place in two years? Why are we coming back in there? This don't make no sense. Go and tell Hananiah this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back. Go back because this, this Bible study, somebody missed this. Go tell Hananiah, who he talking to? Jeremiah, the prophet. We know that prophet. We preached on that prophet. We know how he turned on God and how Jeremiah didn't want to say God's name no more because he got tired of getting beat up, putting in jail for talking for God. But some kind of way, Jeremiah has put his bootstraps on, got on the floor, and he out here again. Now he out here with a yoke around his neck. Tell somebody it ain't never finished. That's the problem. We think when we become saved, that it's over. It ain't over. Tell somebody, it's just starting. Look at here. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place, you will get a yoke of iron. God going to do that to the prophet Hananiah? What a cruel God. Yeah, what, what a... This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Wait a minute. God is going against what Hananiah has just told the people. But Hananiah is a prophet, so he say. So he say. We got a lot of them in the church. Too many people in the church get caught up on how somebody say hallelujah and how they got a shake to them. You know what I got to shake to them? Because they high. high not, not spiritually high, they worldly high and earthly high. They're they, they moving and you, you so young, you don't know what the truth look like. So what do you do? You start shaking. You shake with them. And God look up there and say, look at all this buffoonery. Back to the text. Look at here now. He said, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations. What? To make them serve Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king who was, had everybody in yokes. Why are you going to let them serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon? And they got Jeremiah. Just like he got you. People you hate got power and rule over you. And you wonder why. And they will serve him. Jesus. Who? I'm exhausted because now the people, the children of Israel has to serve who? Nebuchadnezzar. And they will serve him and I will even give him control over the wild. 
<laughs> Whoa, when God give it to you, let me tell you something. God don't have no prospective person. This king ain't about nothing, but God don't gave him all this power over all the children of Israel, of Babylon everywhere. And then he gave him power over the animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, listen. Whoo. Hananiah, but look what's behind Hananiah's name. There's a what? An explanation point there. That lets me know that Jeremiah, who used to be a punk, now has grown up. You see what hard times are do to you? While you complaining about hard times, you see how hard times build character? You better get away from people who don't know how to do hard things. You better get away from people who are always talking down when you're trying to go up a hill. They're telling you you're too hard to climb. You better leave old cats alone. He says, listen, Hananiah. Oh, Jeremiah. The Lord has not sent you. Got to be my wait a minute. Let me put some William. The Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded. You have persuaded this nation to trust in what? Trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. See, that's a true prophet. That's a true prophet. You get prophets who just go around here and you can ask them a question, then they can prophesy then. You better be careful because God ain't always on Reddit like that. You're doing it and they're doing it to try to prove something. You want to know something, that person trying to prove to you how anointed they are. And most times when they do that, they are not anointed. Because I tell you in a minute, you go, what you think about this, Pastor? God hadn't spoke to me on it. Let me pray about it. Let, let me pray about that. Therefore, this is what the Lord said. I am about to remove you Ooh. from the face of the earth. Jesus, let me read that again. I'm about to remove you. Not, not move you remove you. I'm not moving you to another place on earth. You have lied to my people. I'm removing you away from the earth. Jesus, you might have enemies on this, on this earth, but don't let God be one. Don't, don't let God be one. If it's you against a hundred, but God with you, trust God. This very year you are going to You got to go, Hananiah. This isn't Jeremiah. He's only the voice that God is using. I tell people all the time, be careful what you ask for when you start asking for the prophetic. Because a lot of times the prophetic don't always bring cheerful news. Sometimes you have to tell people the truth. The truth is whatever God said, and then they'll figure it out from there. This, this very year, you're going to die because you have preached, watch this, rebellion, Jesus, against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah, the prophet, died. The text I want to pull from this tonight is one year to live. One year to live. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this word and the prayer that went forth. We're going to stand on that prayer tonight, God, and just ask that you use me. Use me like you've never used me before, God. Bring this clarity from this text to somebody's heart. Encourage somebody tonight. Somebody who was ready, Lord, to be troubled by excuses. Let them be encouraged by faith. Move in a mighty way in here tonight. Bless those who are watching by way of television. Speak to them through the TV. Anoint them while they're home by themselves. Move furniture. Let them know you're real. Oh, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. On your way down, tell somebody one year to live. One year to live. There, there's so much in that 
that you can pull from that tonight. I see, I see ministers already got their phones out there already looking. God, I can pull this from that sermon. I can pull this. But the main thing I want to pull out of this today is one year to live. Because everything Jeremiah was saying was good. But the main point that he wanted Jeremiah to get across to Hananiah was that you're going down. You're going down, Hananiah, because you have lied and you have brought rebellion against my people. Don't lie to your friends and people in the church because you want to become grandioso. Tell people the truth. They ask you something, don't get up here in the prayer line and lie to people. Try to guess what they're doing because somebody else told. Okay. Okay, this ain't this gonna be ugly tonight, Sister Quand. I see this already. Where this going? I have no friends. But you want to make sure that you do the best you can for God. It's amazing how I find it kind of uh, baffling how Jeremiah now, we just read a couple of weeks ago on how Jeremiah wanted to totally just get away from God. He, he wants to disdain God. He don't want to, I don't even want to say your, mouth, your name no more, God. Your, your name will never come out my mouth again. And then a couple of chapters later, He's serving God again because he told us earlier uh, that it was like fire shut up in his bones. And I guess that he's showing it. He's evident of what a true prophet is. Take a licking and keep on ticking. That's for somebody in here who's been trying to live right. You ain't getting the answers you want. It don't mean you won't get them. It means that God is just still working on you. Because your anointing in you is so great, it takes patience for God to continue to work on you. And as he works on you, he works through you. That's what he was doing with Jeremiah. Now Jeremiah's at a point where Jeremiah's on the other side of the whippings. You know how it is when, when mama go up there and she start whipping everybody in the house, my mama go straight down the line. And hope, I pray all, most of the time she go up the line. Start with Riri. Because Riri going to put on a show. So by the time she got from Riri, and sent Riri on down the hall. She got to Deke. She couldn't catch him. She was too tired to whoop me and George. And I thank Riri and Deke today for the rebellion they had caused me and George to be saved. What's bad for another person might be good for you. I'm telling you, don't take things for granted. You might not realize it then. But in the long run, you'll realize Jeremiah had went through a lot. Now, Jeremiah is right here with Nebuchadnezzar, the king. But here it is right here. Here's, here's the point here. He has yoke on his neck. But the only reason it's on his neck is because it's not nothing what he did. It's because God had preordained it. Who? Is there anybody tonight who feel like there's a yoke on your neck? You feel like you're walking, but you can't turn. You turn, you break your neck. You feel like there's pressure on you. That Jeremiah gives a, a very valid uh, experimentation here of uh, how you go from one place with God and, and you become obedient, and then he'll take you to another place. It seems like after Jeremiah went through all that a couple of chapters earlier with God, it seemed like God would set him somewhere in a nice garden and tell him to rest. No, God said, you've learned from this. Get back up and get on back out there and fight again. And then a couple of chapters later, Jeremiah is now what, down with, with, with a yoke around his neck like an animal. But then, it doesn't make no sense. But then when you think about it and read this, it do make sense because God has now given Nebuchadnezzar kingship not only over people but animals. So when you do that too long, you start getting animals and people confused. Y'all got some relatives that you call them animals. Okay, y'all ain't got an uncle that y'all... Y'all be careful about y'all go, let, baby, let's get to the 4th of July thing early call. Buckwheat and them going to be there. And you know, after, after 6 o'clock, they get crazy. Those animals. You, you know you call them Troy. Okay, you know what? I see where we at tonight, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Nebuchadnezzar now got animals that he control. He got people he's controlling. And he got a false prophet that's lying. False prophet who calls himself, let me put it like that, a prophet. Let me say just false prophet because there's a lot of people who have called themselves 
to obtain gifts that was never given by God. And if he didn't get a gift, how can he supersize that gift with the anointing? Because that's what the anointing does. It escalates. It, 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 it illuminates what you have in the natural. That's, you, if he didn't give me the gift, why am I going to have anointing to prophesy? If you really knew how tired you get from prophesying and how scared you are afterwards. I tell the ministers all the time, any good minister, one thing he's going to do after he ministers God's word, 65 or 70% of the ministers always feel a little down after they minister. Oh, let me say it like this, Darcy, the true ones. The true ones. Because we're always afraid that we miss something. We, we go back and we look and we, well, the first thing you do, everybody, be, you did a great job, Brother Crabtree. You did it, Crabtree, just trying, if I can get by myself and look, man, I missed that. I missed it. And you get to the point to where everything you do is about pleasing God. The same thing holds true here. You had two people with the same title, but you had one that was connected to God, and you had one that was connected to the world. But the people, including Jeremiah, because of the situation they was in, their ears were thirsty. Okay. Okay. You ever been down so long to... Whatever news somebody told you, if you know it was fabrication, it still sounded good. You ain't never been that thirsty as a woman. You, you hadn't had a man talk to you unless it was somebody at the job and it was business. And a man came back and said, you smell nice. And you, well, thank you. I have on, he didn't want to know what you had on. He just gave you a compliment, but you... You want to, you want to follow? No, let me tell you what I got on. I got on, hold on. The children of Israel during this time had grown weary. They were tired. They had become lethargic. They had gotten to the point where any news was good news. And now this prophet comes along. He sees the situation and tries to work off the situation instead of seeing God in the, God in the situation. One thing you learn as you continue to grow in Christ's decondiction is you stop looking parallel at situations. You start looking horizontally at God and God will eventually bring your eyes down to the situation. Hananiah hadn't had no contact with God so he just saw these people were hurting and he said let me tell them something that feels good. Let me lie. This is what's sickening all in the name of the Lord all in the name of the Lord and now he goes out and he gets caught in his lie and God has rewarded him he's rewarded him with death people sin all the time and then they don't think they're going to die but we all going to die that's not the question we should be asking each other. We should be asking each other, where are you going when you die? Are we going to die? That's, that's neither here nor there. We just don't know the time or how we going to die, when we going to die. How many people going to come to your funeral? We, we don't know all that kind of stuff, but we know that something's going to happen. We, 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 we at the point to where Hananiah has been blessed by a gift from God. Because God don't make mistakes. So everything he do got to be a blessing. <laughs> Maybe not a blessing to you, but a blessing to the kingdom. You know how you say, if I can just get this person out of my life, 
my life would be better. <laughs> you, you look at that as a blessing. <laughs> if I can get out of this relationship, <laughs> I'll be so much better. Thank you, Jesus. You know how we do church people. Hallelujah, God blessing. We see that as a blessing. Separation. Well, God did the same thing. He just said, this guy here is, is wreaking too much havoc. We have to move him. But I like how God did it, James, how God stayed on the course of the commandments of Moses. He says that a liar will not even tarry. A liar won't even tarry in his eyesight. Comes right here and show us where Hananiah. You can't even tarry. In my, life, in, my, in my eyesight, I tell you now, get, get your life in order. Make sure you got everything on that resume. There's going to be some dirt on there because none of us are perfect, but make sure line ain't one of them. Because he said a liar won't even tarry. He won't even give a liar an opportunity to, to plead their case. So there's a lot of sin out there. There's a ton of sin. Make sure line ain't one of them. Make sure you tell the truth. And people around you telling the truth because lying, if you do it so long, it becomes so easy. You don't even realize you're lying no more because your lying spirit has taken over the, the spirit of the Lord. And so now stuff coming out your mouth and somebody catch you in a lie and say, well, last week you said this. And then the lie jumped back up because the spirit so so strong. And they say, no, you didn't say no. you No, I didn't. And you got five people saying, girl, yes, you did. In the break room, you say, no, say, no I didn't. And they wait till you walk off. And you know what they still say? She a liar. Lying is tough. The thing that was so detrimental, DeAndre, if you would, about this piece of text, God didn't just strike him down then. God told him, you're going to die. Why would you let a liar even hang around for a little while? Because sometimes a quick death is too easy. Slow deaths bring more agony. Oh, y'all, think about Jesus. It was an excruciating slow death for him, physically and mentally. Now, with this guy here, Hananiah, it was more mentally. But it brought me to something that says, what happens if you found out you only had one year to live? I know we make all these plans, Brother Cedric, to do this. You know, two years from now, the kids, we're going to Disney World. This shit, no, we're going in two years. Dad, I'll be out of high school in two years, but that's when we're going. Because Dad don't want to lie. Dad had been to church. He saw what happened to Hannah Nye. He said, I ain't going to lie to you. Two years. Well, where are we going in between? Grand Park. Grand Park's nice. It's real nice over there. All, they got animals over there, too, if you want to feel closer to this scene here. With Nebuchadnezzar, you can go there too. One year to live. What would you do if you knew you were going to die? We never talk about death in church unless it's the death of Jesus Christ. Which is the ultimate mantra. He's the ultimate death. But what about us? What about our deaths? There was a doctor who called a patient one morning and said, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The patient said, what is the good news? The doctor said, you have 24 hours to live. The patient said, well, what is the bad news? The doctor said, I should have tried calling you yesterday. How would you respond? 
if you were told you only had one year to live. This man in the Bible that we're talking about, Hananiah, actually lived through what we're discussing tonight. He was told that he would die soon. He, he would die soon. They didn't let him give no explanation. No explanation needing explanatory explaining. No, you, you're going to die in a year. I'm, I'm thinking, what happens if that happens? And then I took the yoke from the neck of Jeremiah and broke it. Israel was under attack. Nebuchadnezzar was doing what God had allowed him to do. A lot of times when things happen to you, it's not because you're bad. It's not because you backslid, not because you didn't read your word. It's because sometimes God allowed things to happen so that you can strain. As you strain, you become stronger. It's not about the situation you're in. And I had to learn this, Anthony, that when I'm going through something now, this leads to something else. That he's preparing me for greater. But I can't see it because I'm whining too much about where I am now. Why I got to eat my cereal with water. I guess ain't nobody came up in here but... Me and my sister, at some point, you had to eat your cereal with faucet water. Thank you, Elder. It's all these sedity saints in here. A bunch of sedity saints in here. Uh, you have never had your cereal where you had to mix them with water and eat them. Well, raise your hands. Shame the devil. Mess up his flow for a change. I remember when. I remember when I was back. I remember what it was like. Sometimes you had to eat cereal with a fork. We didn't have the money like y'all do today to go out here and buy all this plastic well. We had three forks and two spoons, and if somebody left one in the room and put it under the bed, one, one of us was in trouble. But God was preparing us for greater. I tell the story sometimes, my wife just like, surprised you weren't in defects. She never said it, she just looked. Like, Y'all did what? Yeah. Say, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we, we ate everything. We ate everything. But what it did, Sister Latanya, it made us appreciate where we are now. Amen. That we don't throw food away. Amen. We be very calculated about what we get out of that refrigerator and what we eat. Because we would know what it's like to look in the refrigerator and the refrigerator look back at you. And then you look at it again and it keep looking at you like, I ain't going nowhere. I make sure that I appreciate if my wife just cooked hot dogs. I, Lord, thank you, babe. Babe, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You want them on a the plate? No, paper plate, fine. True, true. I appreciate it. Because when you come from what we came from, people in the projects die many times over. Here. They die mentally, and then they are resuscitated and rejuvenated, and then they come back the next day, and they go again because of what you see and what you have to endure. That's why I can appreciate Jeremiah, because he had to endure. You can tell Christians who have endured because when enemies come at them, they don't talk about them, they pray for them. When things don't go right in their life, they don't, first place they don't stop going is the church. They get to the church more. I'm, I'm preaching good, but that's okay. That's okay. You can tell people who have spiritual scars on them because they don't stop coming to the household of faith. They don't try to go out there and sabotage other people's spirit by getting a gang going. We got so many uh, Christian gangs in the churches now where you got the, the leader who is the, who the one who's the most teed off at the pastor. 
And then they go out there, Mother Brooks, and they get all the people in the church who've been halfway in and out and build a gang against God's people. God say, touch not my prophet. Do my anointed no harm. You are killing yourself. Don't even know it. Amazing this, this thing, if you would, how Hananiah broke off the yoke of Jeremiah and confidently declared in the name of God that within two years, the whole nation would be free. That's bold. The only problem with it was that God didn't say that. We have to understand in this life that some things we will die to, some things that on the other side will die from us. We have to understand that death comes in a lot of segues. Sometimes death will come in the family and you have the funerals and all that, but sometimes death comes with friendships. It comes with a job. It comes in marriages. So sometimes death comes in a lot of ways. We just look at it when people right here. But, but, but when I cut a cord on something that I had a covenant with, that's death. That's death. A lot can happen in a year. We've witnessed that change happening in a year. People's bodies change in a year. Residency change in a year. We bring memories from the previous year. We, we don't understand what it means to be on life support fighting for air. We, we, don't, we don't mean that. I'm talking about spiritually. When all hell has broken loose in your life, and you refuse to change anything in your life, you are telling everybody and your angels, your grace and your mercy, I'm ready to die. Because the Bible says to everything as a time, a season, and a purpose under the heavens. Why do we not change when we're trying to draw closer to God, why is it that we'd rather just stay there and do what we're doing, do our little cute prayer we do, sit in our same little seat every Sunday, pray once a week, and get up and then get up and expect God to give you all kind of power? There is a scripture over in the book of Hebrews, thank you, Holy Ghost, 11 and 1, when it talks about a cloud of witnesses. Yeah! You know why the cloud of witnesses are there? Because they're there because every one of them have been beat down in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the beautiful part of it is they got up not one time but two times beat down. And you know what they did? Got up and then they got beat down over here in this city. And what they got up. That's why they're in the cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It's not for them to be historically appreciate it that's not like God that, that that that's that's not being humble you know why they're there that cloud of witnesses think about the names in that cloud David fighter messed up more times than not still after God's own heart Moses Moses think about Moses a leader even with the inability to truly talk. All these great people in this cloud of witnesses, these cloud of witnesses are there so that we can look up and get encouragement from somebody who has taken a licking and kept on ticking. That's why the cloud of witnesses are there. So let me tell you this now. So whatever you need, <laughs> God's got it. It depends on where you are in your relationship with God. That depends on which one of the matrons you go to. If I'm trying to lead people in the church and they're acting crazy, Moses, can I holler at you? If I'm out here finna go to war and kill people and don't nobody in my family like me, uh, David, David, let me holler at you. Everybody in that cloud of witnesses are there. 
with one thing in common. They died for him. Are you willing to die for him? You've just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristim.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.